Hey guys, and welcome back to the Fantasy Table, brought to you by the Blue Stable. I am once again your host, Luke Verkamp, and again with me tonight is Austin. How are we doing tonight, Austin? Pretty good. Just a little tired, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is, yep. That's how, how it goes around these parts once you're an adult. Adult life <laughs> is fun, isn't it? Right. You're telling me. <laughs> Well, starting off the show this week, we wanted to do something a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to each say one thing that we learned from this past week of football, because, I mean, it was a crazy week of football. And Austin, I'll let you go ahead and go first on this one. Uh, So the first thing that I learned, or not the first thing, but the the one thing that I learned, the big main thing is that in, in the fantasy football, depth is key. It is absolutely key. All of the injuries that we have been seeing week in, week out over the last six weeks, uh, especially this week, uh, one of the biggest things going on right now, Nick Chubb and maybe even Kareem Hunt probably not going to play on Thursday. Um, actually, well, I Kareem think Hunt's on IR. So. Kareem Hunt went on IR, so he's definitely not playing. I believe Nick Chubb was just declared out today. Um, so both of them not playing on Thursday. It's going to be Dearness Johnson and Demetric Felton at running back on a team that is already run heavy as it is. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see that going on. And I'm sure we'll talk about that a little later. But depth is, is, is absolutely key with all the injuries. Using that waiver wire correctly, you know, getting those guys that are actually going to be utilized rather than guys that are just in there because of an injury. That, that's, that's pretty much what I've learned this week so far. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because a lot of people – they like to think, oh, you got to get your star guys. You got to have like a lot at the top. And a lot of people trade away their depth guys, like their Zach Moss is away, along with another receiver to like upgrade at the receiver position. But sometimes it's almost better to keep those depth guys on your bench. So that way, whenever your Kareem Hunt goes down, when your Nick Chubb goes down, when your Calvin Ridley is out for not injury related, but Julio Jones has been in and out. Like AJ Brown, all these guys are just in and out. Sometimes it's better to have those bench players that you can fill in that are still decent enough to get you some points and not like you're just throwing darts at the wall, like throwing in Naheem Hines, hoping he can go off for this week. So, yeah, I totally get that. Now, for my lesson learned is that I might have been wrong with Winer from Met in my preseason rankings i'm not saying he's going to keep going on this pace because i know you'll talk about him later Mm -hmm. but he's been very inconsistent in his career especially last year whenever he's splitting between him and ronald jones and so far this year it's especially these last three weeks it's been the leonard Fournette show and like this past week alone he got 28 touches which is a lot for a running back, especially six targets. Six targets is huge, especially in PPR formats. Um, I know someone did the statistic on this a while back, and I'm sorry, I don't know who it is, so I can't give credit. But in PPR formats, one target is equal to two and a half carries just because of the opportunity and getting a full point per reception. So one target, again, one one target equals two and a half carries. So Fournette, he's been on a tear, but if he can keep this up, it's another thing, but it seems like Ronald Jones is almost non-existent in his Buccaneers offense. You know, it's funny you say that because at the beginning of the season, it really seemed like everybody was counting on Ronald Jones to be that guy. Something that I saw in the playoffs that a lot of people, a lot of people saw it, but nobody really like picked it up and really said anything with it is that Leonard Fournette was getting a bulk of the care. He was playoff Lenny, you know, playoff Lenny was, he was going crazy in the playoffs. So I kind of saw that and I took that as, you know, he actually may be getting more touches than people think this year. And at the beginning of the year, not really, but as the year went on and he started better and better and better. I mean, now he's got, you know, just, in, you know, rushes, the rushes alone, he had 26 rushes just last week against Philadelphia, which is insane because this is a very, very pass heavy offense. You haven't seen anybody in this, in this offense get 22 rushes all season. 
And I'm not honestly sure about last season, but it wouldn't surprise me if you haven't seen anybody get 22 rushes last season too. But that's, that's, that's a big thing for Leonard Fournette. And he has looked, he's actually looked pretty solid. And like you said, we'll get to him later, but um, you know, so far so good for him because he's been pretty solid. Yeah, looking at last season, I just looked it up real quick. Ronald Jones had 23 carries twice, but that was the highest between him and Fournette. Fournette didn't have any carry count over 15 last year. So, yeah, now that they're giving him more carries, like playoff Lenny and Super Bowl Lenny might actually be regular season Lenny now, too. Yeah, at this point. He's starting to look like that rookie season Lenny that we all thought was going to be that big up-and-coming running back for the Jaguars only to fall off off of a cliff for the Jaguars. Ended up getting picked up by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's looking really good for them so far. He's got 100-plus uh, yards from scrimmage just in the last three weeks. So, I mean, he's looked really good. And he's, he's showing out on fantasy, but on that. we'll get to that later. Yeah, for sure. Now, next thing up, we're, we're just going to go through the news and notes from the league from this past week and it's mainly injuries and there's a lot of them but the first things first that I want to get through is the biggest news of the weekend which happened Friday morning after the Thursday night football game was that Zach Ertz got traded to the Arizona Cardinals now this is pretty big for a couple reasons because this shows that the Eagles are trusting in Dallas Goddard to be their tight end of the future Um, I know they mentioned after Ertz got traded that they want to see first if Goddard can be that guy before they pay him. But he's to me, he's more talented than what Ertz is at this point in his career. But, I mean, it was pretty close. You could see that they're splitting the targets in Philadelphia. They're splitting time. But for me, I like this a lot more for Goddard than I do for Ertz. I think Goddard could be a top 10 tight end the rest of the season just for how much Jalen Hurts has been targeting their tight ends this season. But Hurts is going to a crowded uh, offense there in Arizona with DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Green, uh, Christian Kirk, Rondell Moore, and so on. But what's your thoughts on Hurts going to Arizona there? Awesome. Yeah, so I'm pretty much in the same boat. Um... Um, just like you said, it really seems like Philadelphia is trusting in Dallas Goddard, which it kind of seems like they were starting to last year. Um, they picked up Dallas Goddard in the draft when they drafted him, I think solely because they wanted him to be that heir apparent to Zach Ertz, who was already their star tight end. He gave his heart and soul to Philly. Um, this year and last year, Zach Ertz hasn't quite been Zach Ertz. The last couple of weeks, he's been getting more involved because Dallas Goddard's been out. Um, but he hasn't been quite what he once was. And I, I honestly think at one point in time, he was the best tight end in the league. Um, during the offseason, I really wanted the Colts to trade for him. Didn't end up happening. Obviously never going to happen now because he's in Arizona. Um, but it, just like you said, just reiterating there, it is there's a lot of mouths to feed in Arizona. Um, you know, a top three wide receiver right now, maybe even the best wide receiver arguably in DeAndre Hopkins. Christian Kirk, who is starting to, to break out again, who should have broken out like two years ago, but is finally starting to break out. Rondell Moore, who is starting to break out. Um, I mean, it's just A.J. Green. I mean, just four wide receivers alone who should be getting targets and should be getting a lot of targets. It's going to be really difficult for Zach Ertz to, to get anything going in Arizona, but I do like the, the fit there. I do think that Arizona needed a tight end, and Arizona really hasn't had a good tight end in a very, very long time. So I think I think I like this a lot. I like to see where this goes. Um, but overall, I mean, it, it it'll be interesting to see for sure. There's there's really too much to say about it. Yeah, I gotta say I like the fit too, but I just feel like compared to Goddard, especially, is that it's going to be very inconsistent there, just because of the weapons around him. Like in Philadelphia, you got. Uh, Devonta Smith and Jalen Rager, and that's about it. Uh, the running backs, I guess you could. I wouldn't even say Devonta. Or I wouldn't even say Jalen Rager is really a weapon in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, true. Like I say, but yeah, Devonta Smith's the only one that can really compete as that like number one option there in Philly for him. I would say. So yeah. Anyway, to get on with the news, um, T.Y. Hilton came back from the injury reserve. He had four targets 
four receptions and 80 yards this past week. Christian McCaffrey, surprisingly, after almost playing last week, went on to the injured reserve. So he's going to miss the next two games at least because he got put on IR before this last game and he had to miss three games minimum. So he's going to miss at least the next two weeks. Rashad Bateman got activated off the IR and he played this past week, but they said that he's going to be worked in slowly, not put out all at once. Kadarius Tony left with an ankle injury in their game and reports came out yesterday that it could be serious. So we'll have to see how long that's going to be. Antonio Gibson left early with a shin injury. Shin injury, from what I heard, that could that could impact the rest of his season. Latavius Murray had an ankle injury as well. So we're not sure the timetable on that, but they the Ravens actually just activated um, Le'Veon Bell from their practice squad to the 53. So could be big. Kareem Hunt is going to miss a few weeks. He got put on the injury reserve. So he's going to miss at least the next three games. Baker Mayfield had a dislocated shoulder and a torn labrum, he said, after week two. But they say he's going to keep playing through it. Dak had a calf injury, but they said that he should be ready after their bye for week eight. Michael Thomas is eligible to return this week but he still said that he's a couple weeks from returning to play. Calvin Ridley, he missed last week due to personal reasons. He's back at practice this week, so he's planning on playing this week. Seahawks have looked into Cam Newton, among other free agent quarterbacks. Now, Austin, I want to get your take on this. This is kind of in the moment, but what would you think if Cam Newton went to the Seahawks? So – Here's the thing about Cam Newton is that he is Russell Wilson. I think at this point in his career, he's a little bit of a worse Russell Wilson. He's not MVP Cam. He's not Super Cam anymore. But he is, you know, he's got that similar skill set. He's got the arm, but he can also run if needed. I think Cam is a little more of a power runner than Russell Wilson is. And I think Cam likes to run more than Russell Wilson does. Um, but I, I do think, you know, that that offense is pretty much built for a mobile quarterback or at least a quarterback who can take off if needed. Um, Cam is that. But I don't think Cam is the same quarterback that he, you know, we once knew and loved, or at least just knew. I don't know how many people really liked Cam. I personally didn't like Cam too much. I thought he was a show off. Normally, I like the show offs, but you know, not in this case. Um, but you know, it, it it would be interesting to see in him in that offense. I because I, I like I said, I do think that offense is kind of built for a Cam Newton type quarterback. Um, and it'd be, it'd be pretty fun to see him, you know, out there with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Chris Carson, when he comes back from IR, but I, I, I don't think they're going to go full out with this. I, I think Geno Smith's going to be the guy until Cam comes back. I think they're going to roll with him. Um, but you know, I'd, I'd be like to prove wrong in this situation. I think Cam in a Seahawks uniform look pretty cool. I'm not I'm just saying. Yeah, that, that jersey fit would be pretty cool, actually. But, yeah, if they're hoping that Russ can come back week 10, I I don't really see much point in signing Cam for just, just these next two to three weeks. So, yeah, I agree with you there. Alex Collins had a hip injury. He's not ruled out yet for week seven, but he could be, which Rashad Penny also came off the IR, so he is a name to watch. He could get a lot of playing time if Alex Collins and Chris Carson are both out this next week. Tyrod Taylor is now day-to-day, so he could make a return anytime soon, which Houston desperately needs it because Davis Mills is not the guy. Jerry Judy is on the way back, but Denver said that there is less than a 50% chance that he plays this week, so don't be counting on him. Teams are rumored to be interested in trading for running backs with all the running back injuries. The main two names that are swirling around are Marlon Mack and Ronald Jones, among some other running backs. But those are the two biggest names uh, that are being circulated. Paris Campbell left with this foot injury, and Frank Reich said it's significant and will miss some time. Unfortunate for him, he's just dealt with injuries all his career. Just he actually got one. put on IR too today. Yeah, yeah, he got put on IR today. That's right. It, would, it wouldn't surprise me if that was a season-ending IR. 
Yeah, I hope not for his sake, but I think this is just Paris Campbell that we're going to have to live with for the next year and a half. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just how he's been, and it's unfortunate because – him as a talent is really good, but as we saw this past week, he had that 50 yard touchdown, but it's just, you yeah. can't keep it on the field. When he's on the field, he's electric, but it, the issue is getting him on the field. Yeah. Yeah. And then, as I said earlier, Le'Veon Bell got promoted to the 53, which is pretty big news. Uh, after hearing that Latavius Murray could be out for a little bit. So he could be a name to watch. Nick Chubb, as we said a bit ago, is out for Thursday Night Football. So, Browns will be out Chubb and Hunt. So, they're going back to some backup running backs. Um, Dawson Knox broke a bone in his hand during the game on Monday Night Football. He still threw a pass to Josh Allen on the two-point conversion afterwards, but... He had to leave the field after that. They said he might miss some time, but they're hoping that he doesn't miss very much. All right, so let's get into some waiver pickups. And now this week, it's kind of more important than normal due to the injuries and the bipocalypse that we got going on this week. This week, teams on by, we have the Bills, the Cowboys, the Jaguars, the Vikings, the Steelers, and the Chargers. Not only is it just a lot of teams, it's a lot of teams that have a lot of fantasy relevant players. Like just alone, you look at the Cowboys, they have C.D. Lamb, Mari Cooper, Zeke, Tony Pollard, sometimes Dak. Dalton Schultz has been pretty good at tight end. Bills, they got all their wide receivers, Dawson Knox, Zach Moss, Josh Allen. Jaguars even, they got James Robinson and Marvin Jones hasn't been too bad, so. So a lot of teams on by. What do you think about this, Austin? So it is definitely a lot of teams on buys. Uh, I am one of those people who is getting absolutely tortured by that in most of my leagues. Uh, um, I have a decent bit of, of solid players who are on pretty much all of those teams. Um, so, I mean, it is really – on the good side of it, you got to look at it. There are a lot of other people who aren't you who have that same issue right now. These people are struggling to find talent. Now is your chance to dive in there. Now is your chance to sell your guys that you want to sell just just for this week. Just get them to a different team for this week. Get your return for those guys. Maybe even somebody who's on a buy currently. Sell them. Get that return. You're going to be good from here out. Meanwhile, they've got, you know, their guy for the bye week right now. But from here out, you know, you're the one on that trade in the, in the end. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up briefly later in the trade for trade away segment. But there's a lot of teams in your league that you can go to and try to get a talented player that might be injured or on a buy or something like that, or had a down game and then a buy that they might want to try to get rid of them to have someone that can give them points now. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's get into the waiver wire segment. Um, we'll start off with quarterbacks and I'm going to start off with Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy, he has always been a very low end starter, but he's always been pretty consistent with his play especially whenever he has good talent around him, which once he gets Jerry Judy back, he'll have a lot of talent around him. Whenever you have Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, Noah Fant, along with the two running backs and Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon, he's got a decent schedule coming up, especially this next three weeks, which, so he could be a good streaming replacement for you. If you have any, if your quarterback is on a buy in the next three weeks, He's got Cleveland, Washington, and Dallas. All three are in the top 10 on fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. So he's a name to keep an eye on. Yeah, for sure. Um, especially this week, like like we said earlier, if you got a quarterback or even two quarterbacks that are on a bye and Teddy Bridgewater is sitting there on the waiver wire, go ahead and give him a pickup because the Cleveland Browns this week, who they play this week on Thursday – are the fourth worst team 
against quarterbacks. Fourth worst, especially with all the injuries that they've got going on right now. It is it is going to be crucial that Teddy Bridgewater gets the ball going in the air because he's going to be able to torch that defense if he can get Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick and Noah Fant going. And it, it's going to be it's going to be pretty good for him. Yeah, which I think they will, especially because Cleveland, they're pretty good against the run and they're not so great against the pass. So I feel like they're going to be going in there if they want to try to win this game. All right. So who do you have for your first quarterback waiver wire pickup, Austin? So my quarterback pickup on the waiver wire here right now is going to be, it can be a combination of these guys. It is going to be Jimmy Garoppolo and or Trey Lance. One of them is going to be on the waiver wire. If one of them isn't on the waiver wire, he's going to be because somebody's going to pick up the other one, whether it's you, whether it's somebody else. If Jimmy G's on the waiver wire right now, which he is in a couple of leagues that I'm actually in, you know, he's got a pretty solid matchup coming up this week against the Colts. As much as that pains me to say, the Colts have zero secondary going on right now. Jimmy G, uh, Debo Samuel, who has been, you know, pretty electric so far for the Niners they're going to be able to get going against that Colts defense who is stopping nobody. Uh, Davis Mills was starting to light up that Colts defense. That's how bad it's been. So you pick up Jimmy G or at the very least, let somebody else pick him up, wait for Trey Lance to get dropped because Trey Lance is going to be the starter again in a week or two. If he's not the starter this week, he's going to be the starter in a week or two because Jimmy G is going to prove that he's not all that. Trey Lance was the better quarterback this entire time. They're giving Jimmy G the ball right now for some strange reason, despite the fact that Trey Lance has not been that bad the last couple of weeks. Um, you pick up Trey Lance after he's dropped, you're going to be pretty solid for the future. Yeah, a big thing about Trey Lance is that he's a rushing quarterback too, which is huge for fantasy-wise because rushing yards gets you a lot more than passing yards. Sure. As I talked about last week with Jalen Hurts, I mean, Jalen Hurts, he has like, 200 passing yards and an interception and yet he's still like a top five quarterback because he has 60 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown Mm -hmm. so yeah i definitely agree trey lance he could be a stash and a league winner just because if he's just starting in that offense with george kittle um debo samuel if brandon iq ever does anything again um they like to run the ball yeah if he starts you could easily be a top 10, top five quarterback towards the end of the season. As the as for next quarterback that you want to look at to pick up is going to be Tua Tagovailoa, which he finally is showing why the Dolphins tanked for Tua. Now, Tua has been up and down the start of his career, mainly due to injury and it's unfortunate because there was that whole tank for Tua last year. He great talent. He's got good weapons around him too, with Jalen Waddle, Devontae Parker, and Mike Gasicki and Will Fuller. But many of those have been hurt recently, so that hurts him. But he's gotten better. He's he's showing flashes on how he can be a good quarterback. And he's definitely worth a guy that he's definitely worth a shot. I'm taking just because he is that talented to where you could pick him up and he could show out. He he could be a top quarterback towards the end of the season. Um, It's worth it. To me, it's worth a shot trying. I actually, I completely agree. Um, He hasn't played since week two against Buffalo. Only had four passes in that game before he got hurt. It's been the, uh, Jacoby Brissett show pretty much ever since then. Last week against Jacksonville, albeit you know not the greatest of defenses, they rank roughly in the middle of the pack against quarterbacks, but he still had 47 attempts. So that really shows that they're they're wanting him to get right back into that offense. They didn't try to slow him into that at all. They gave him almost 50 attempts right off the bat. Um, he finished that game with 329 yards, two touchdowns. He did have a pick but he also had three rushes for 22 yards, which pretty much makes up the points for that pick. Something you got to remember about Tua is that it's pretty much similar to Trey Lance. He also can run the ball. So in an offense that hasn't been utilizing their running backs really at all, and they really should, I'm not, that's a story for a different time though. Miles Gaskin is much better than they're making him out to be. Um, 
in an offense that isn't utilizing those running backs. Tua is basically that running back at this point. Um, anytime that you're getting a quarterback who's throwing the ball 50 times and then rushing for another 20 yards, it's going to be good for fantasy for sure. Absolutely. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be good for fantasy. That 10th time is when you are – actually, I don't think there's a 10th time. You know what? Forget about that 10th time. There is no 10th time. If you got a quarterback who could throw and run the ball, it's good for fantasy. That's all you need to know. It doesn't matter how many picks they throw. That Those rushing yards are making up those picks, and then you've got that the passing game on top of that. Um, if he's sitting on your waiver wire, go pick him up because he's got, especially this week, a very, very favorable matchup against Atlanta. Atlanta, who is currently uh, – you know, they're, they're doing all right against against quarterbacks, but, you know, it, it's still a pretty favorable. Their, their defense as a whole is not that great. I really think if he can get the ball going against Atlanta, then he'll be fine. Um, my next guys are guys we already talked about a little bit. It's going to be Dearness Johnson and Demetri Felton, two very, very young running backs for the Browns. Um, Nick Chubb out, Kareem Hunt out, short week to Thursday game. These guys are probably going to be carries. Baker Mayfield already said his arm's not feeling, you know, how it should feel. He's got a, a torn labrum in his arm. He dislocated his shoulder. He's not going to be able to throw the ball very well. Um, I believe, is Jarvis Landry back this week? Or was he back last week? No, I haven't heard that he got activated yet. I know um, I know he was questionable last week and they didn't activate him but I haven't saw any news that he got activated yet. Yeah, you're right. He's still out. Um, yeah, it says uh, Stefanski said Landry will move around at Tuesday's practice and may be cleared to play Thursday, but that's the most recent news I got on him. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. Um, so it, it doesn't look like there's going to be any sort of receiving threat going on. Donovan Peoples-Jones had a really good game last week, but outside of him, there's really nothing else on that offense to throw to. So these guys are – You still got OBJ. <laughs> do you, though, at this point? <laughs> um, you know, this this is a rushing first offense. Much before they even think about passing the ball, they're going to run the ball. The Ernest Johnson, uh, a solid running back. I wouldn't say he's good by any means. That's why he's third string on that depth chart. Demetri Felton is, would be, if anything, a better pickup because it wouldn't surprise me if they start splitting carries – just to see what they've got out of both of these backs, especially in a short week. It wouldn't surprise me if they split carries, but Demetri Felton has that receiving game. He played receiver a lot at UCLA. You know, he's going to be a pretty solid receiving threat out of that backfield, or at least in the slot. Outside, he can really do it all. Yeah, for me, the the Ernest Johnson is my pickup of the week. I think he's going to be used more in the running game than what Felton will. Felton has been taking snaps at receiver, especially with Jarvis Landry out. So to me, I would prefer Dearness Johnson over Felton, but I'd be okay with picking up Felton in the hope in the in case that Chubb will be out the next week, next two weeks. Um, I doubt that'll happen. I think Chubb comes back next week, but it would be hard for me to say to pick up Felton and start him whenever he's been getting a lot of snaps at receiver instead of running back. Um, Johnson, after Hunt left the game this past week, he got the carry at running back. There's only one carry after Hunt left. So I'd pick up Johnson over Felton, but they're both names to watch. And talking about running backs that are on a run heavy team, the next two guys that I'm going to talk about is Devonta Freeman and Le'Veon Bell. Um, like we said earlier, Latavius Murray left with an ankle injury. We don't know the extent of it, but the fact that Le'Veon Bell got promoted to the 53 means that could be some significant. Um, if I had to pick up one of these two, I'd be picking up Devonta Freeman just because he has been getting work already in this offense. Um, Le'Veon Bell, to me, at this point, is just kind of like a stash. he probably get used a little bit more now that Murray is down but I don't know how much he's going to get used. So Devontae Freeman and Le'Veon Bell, I really feel like are going to be splitting carries, if anything, if Devontae Freeman even plays. Um, I think Le'Veon Bell is going to get a bulk of the carries. It seemed last week like they liked him a little bit more than they liked uh, Devontae Freeman. Did Freeman play last week? 
I believe so because he. I know he played. Uh, whenever we play, whenever the Colts played the Ravens. So. so last week, Freeman and Bell basically split carries down the middle. Freeman with nine, Le'Veon Bell with eight. Neither got involved in the receiving game, although Freeman was targeted twice. Le'Veon Bell was not targeted, which is strange because that should be backwards. Le'Veon Bell is much more the receiving back than Devontae Freeman is. Um, but Le'Veon Bell had a touchdown. Devontae Freeman had a touchdown. So it really, there's not really any telling what they're going to do this week. It, you know, if you've got one of those running backs that are currently on a buy right now, it wouldn't hurt to grab one of these. And it really seems like it's going to be a coin flip at this point. Um, Devontae Freeman last week against the Chargers, 5.89 yards per carry, had 53 yards. Le'Veon Bell, not so lucky, 2.2 yards per carry, only 18 yards. Both about the same amount of carries. So both had a touchdown. But if anything, I mean, it, it really seems like a coin flip. If you want to go with the guy who was more hot last week, be my guest. If you want to go with the guy who, you know, was good at one point in time, also be my guest. The Bengals really are pretty much middle of the pack against running back. So it's, you know, it doesn't matter either way. Um, another running back I want to take a look at is going to be Rashad Penny. Uh, with Chris Carson being put on IR and Zach Collins, um, Alex Collins. Uh, pretty much. Alex Collins. Who's, who's Zach Collins? Zach Collins is a forward for the Trailblazers. <laughs> With Alex Collins uh, pretty much up in the air for this week. Um, you know, Rashad Penny, who hasn't played at all since week one against the Colts, got hurt in that game, hasn't played since then. He is coming off of IR. He will return this week. Um, they're probably going to get him in there, you know, a, a, pretty fairly often if Zach, or Zach Collins, I said it again, if Alex Collins isn't going to be able to go, they're probably going to get him in there more often than they should. You got to remember, this is a former first round pick. This is Rashad Penny. Did they take him too high in the first round when they grabbed him? They did. Should they have taken Rashad Penny at all? No, they should not have. Was he good? Was he good enough for the first round? No, he was not. But right now he's pretty much their only option. Geno Smith isn't getting the ball done in the air, although he hasn't been playing terrible. He's not getting it done in the air. Rashad Penny's probably going to be leaned on relatively heavily, and I'd like to see what he does up against the Saints defense, um, who is actually pretty solid against running backs. But, you know, I'd still like to see what he can do against them. Yeah, the big thing about Rashad Penny is that he's probably going to get a bulk of the carries. So if Alex Collins is out, that's the thing. We don't know yet. But, yeah, if he's out, I, I don't mind starting Rashad Penny with everyone on by um, if you don't have a better option. But, yeah, he's definitely a guy that I want to add just in case both of them are out. That way you got a starting running back in the league. Um, but, yeah, moving on. We'll, well, actually, real quick, something I did want to mention here is yeah. if Alex Collins does not play – Last week, he did get 20 carries and had 101 yards on the ground. So it really seemed like they want to use that running back. If Rashad Penny plays and Alex Collins doesn't, he's probably going to get a bulk of those carries, and it's probably going to be a, quite a bit of carries too. Um, if Alex Collins does play, it, they may split them. But if he doesn't, Rashad Penny may be a good, a good start for that running back spot. Yeah, I'm not sure if they would split with how good Alex Collins has been. Like he, he he looked pretty good against that Steelers defense. I was watching that game and I, I was impressed with the whole Seattle offense in general. But the Steelers really are pretty good against the run too, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. I gotta say that that was the one thing that I was worried about. I know I had a question on our Twitter at the fantasy table, by the way, if you want to follow us. Um, I had a question about Tim Patrick or Alex Collins, and I I picked Tim Patrick just because I I saw that. Steelers defense and I wasn't expecting the Seahawks to move the ball at all and they just ran all over him I was, I was shocked but yeah and the next guy that I want to talk about here is Chris Evans Chris Evans he got a little bit of work this past week with getting four carries on the ground and three targets through the air um, he didn't do much on the ground he had 18 yards but he averaged four and a half yards per carry so that's not too bad and then I know he had a long touchdown reception, which really helped him. But if Joe Mixon is ever to go down again, they might 
start letting Chris Evans get some more work. So he's definitely a name to keep an eye on. Um, If you have an extra bench spot, he might be worth a stash just because Joe Mixon, he hasn't been the most healthy running back in the past few years. So yeah, if you can go ahead and pick up Captain America, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, I do. I do like Chris Evans as a running back. Um, I'm an Ohio State fan, so I did watch him against Michigan quite a bit. Um, and he is, you know, he's a pretty solid running back as it is. They didn't use him too often at all, actually. And every single week leading up to last week, last week, like you said, he had four carries, but he also had three targets, three receptions and a touchdown. Um, so it seems like they're kind of targeting him out of the backfield. Obviously, Joe Mixon's going to get a bulk of those targets out of the backfield. Obviously, Joe Mixon's going to get a bulk of those attempts. Um, but if he doesn't, this Bengals offense isn't the Bengals offense of old. It looks like a pretty high powered offense who like to do a lot of different things. They like to throw the ball. They like to run the ball. They like to get a lot of different looks going. If some Maj P Ryan doesn't come back next week, um, off of the COVID list, you know, Chris Evans would be a pretty solid pickup because he's he still want to be that backup to Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon's tired. He comes out. Or even if Joe Mixon gets hurt, like, you know, classic Joe Mixon. You know, Chris Evans would be a pretty solid pickup in general. Uh, another running back I want to take, take a look at here is going to be J.D. McKissick. Um, McKissick, as a running back, has been pretty solid. Uh, he's been decent, uh, especially with Antonio Gibson going out. Uh, um, if Antonio Gibson does not play on Sunday, J.D. McKissick's going to get a bulk of those carries. He already has been pretty utilized in this offense as it is. He's been more utilized in the the receiving game than he has in the rushing game, but he's been, he's been pretty featured in this offense. It really seems like Ron Rivera likes using him, but it also seems like Ron Rivera is using him like back then Antonio Gibson was supposed to be, he's getting all these receiving targets that Gibson was supposed to be, but now with him hurt, he's getting, he's going to be getting these rushing attempts as well as these uh, receiving targets. So it's going to be a pretty solid fantasy pickup. If you do want to go pick him up, um, a game against the Packers right now. The Packers currently rank 18th against running backs. So, I mean, it's pretty middle of the pack. It can be, you can go either way. Um, J.D. McKissick last week, 10 targets out of the backfield, eight receptions, 65 yards. That's pretty crazy. He had 19 fantasy points in this PPR. So, I mean, you know, he's, he's kind of going off as a backup, which is pretty crazy. So it would not be a bad pickup at all if you want to go pick him up. Yeah, unfortunately, as a guy that has loved Antonio Gibson and has a few shares of him, I am very saddened by it because I really thought that Antonio Gibson could have got a Christian McCaffrey type workload because, I mean, he was a wide receiver in college, so he can obviously catch the ball, but they just haven't utilized him like that. They obviously like J.D. McKissick in the passing down situations, which is unfortunate, but yeah, if Gibson is to miss time. He's going to be a very solid option just based on his receiving work alone. And now that he's, if he would get carries out of the backfield, even better. Now, moving into wide receivers, though, the first thing I want to mention is check to see if Michael Thomas or Jerry Judy are on your waiver wires. If they are, that should be your top priority as Jerry Judy is going to be coming back soon and Michael Thomas could be coming back in a couple weeks. Um, if they're out there, go get them. And the third guy that's kind of in that list is Rashad Bateman. Now, Rashad Bateman's different just because he's played already since coming off IR. But, I mean, they said that they're going to ease him in, but yet he still got six targets this past week, which is a good amount for a guy just playing his first game this season. Um If you look at his schedule the rest of the season, he has a crazy good schedule for wide receivers. If I would, I would honestly even try to trade for him if you can. I should have put him in my buy low segment, but I'm just going to mention it here now. Like, if you can get Rashad Bateman for like a bench player, it's worth a shot because Lamar has grown as a passer. So, if you can get Rashad, who is a very talented receiver, he might be their top option towards the end of the season. Rashad Bateman really has been – he was, a, a you know, one of the top receivers in last year's draft, or I guess this year's draft technically. Um, but like you said, Lamar as a passer has been really growing. 
Uh, he had 400 yards against us last week, unfortunately. Um, and he's really been targeting Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews a lot because those are the only two receivers he has. Rashad Bateman as a receiver, really, really good option. Um, you, you pick him up, eventually Lamar Jackson's going to pick that up too. He's going to start throwing his way a lot more. He's going to be pretty good. Um, as for Jerry Judy and Michael Thomas, a lot of people are probably thinking, you know, this guy or Jerry Judy's not going to be on any, any waiver wires. Uh, Rashad Bateman's not going to be any waiver wires. How are these waiver wire pickups? I'm here to tell you right now, they are. Because in two of my leagues, two of the four leagues I'm in, Jerry Judy's just sitting there on waivers just because he's on IR. And that's a really good receiver to be sitting there on waivers. Uh, same with Rashad Bateman. As soon as he came back, I saw him on waivers. And I'm like, why is he sitting there? Unfortunately, my team was too good to pick him up, but there's still no reason that they should be there. But in some leagues, they are. So just make sure you're double checking that. You got to say, Jerry Judy is right under 80%. I think it was 79%. Michael Thomas is at 89% rostered, but Rashad Bateman's at 43%, which I think is yeah. way too low for him. That's crazy. Like, you, if Rashad Bateman's sitting there in your waiver wire right now, stop this video, leave go pick him up and then come back and we'll finish talking because that is, that's crazy. He should not be sitting there in free agency. Uh, moving on to a different receiver. Um, this receiver is going to be AJ green. He's, you know, a little more washed than you may remember him being, but he has had his fair share of really good games this season, but he's also had his fair share of bad games. Um, he's still AJ green. He's still got that talent but he's also 33 years old in fantasy age doesn't really matter. You're not keeping him forever unless you're in a keeper league. But if you're in a keeper league, why would you keep AJ green? Um, Last week, six targets, 79 yards in a touchdown so far. I'm not saying this is going to continue because it's, it's football. It happens. But right now he has been alternating touchdowns every week. I think that's pretty funny. He week one, he didn't have one week two. He did week three. He didn't week four. He did Week five. He didn't week six. He had one. Does that mean he won't have one this week? Not necessarily. Does that mean he's going to get six targets this week? Like he has been getting every single week, except for week five, not necessarily. Um, but you know, it, it's still a pretty solid pickup. He's been doing very, very well. He's only 57% rostered right now. Go pick up A.J. Green if he's sitting there. He's in a high-powered offense, very, very high-powered. There are a lot of mouths to feed in that offense, but A.J. Green's still really good pickup because it seems like Kyler Murray's starting to like him. I got to say, the fact that every week except week five, he's had exactly six targets is just mind-blowing to me because it's like (laughs) – Surely one of them you'll get seven, one of them you'll get five. No, it's just constant six targets week in, week out. So three of those six targets, he had five receptions. Yeah, that's true. I didn't see that part, but yeah, he does. Um, But yeah, I mean, to me, he's a top pickup. I mean, yes, he's 33 years old, but he's the second string to DeAndre Hopkins. He's not that focal point of the offense. He's the guy that's getting the second cornerback, which – If DeAndre Hopkins were to go down, even he would be probably top dog there and he would get a lot of targets. So to me, he's he's definitely worth keeping on your bench and even a flex play like on weeks that you're hurting. um, He's honestly not a bad flex play in general, especially on good matchups. But yeah, I really like him. He's definitely worth the pickup. And going into our next guy, this is a guy that I am going to talk about every single week until he is rostered in enough leagues, but it's going to be Tim Patrick. And I know we talked to talked about him a bit last week, and um, I know Jerry Judy is going to be coming back, but until Jerry Judy is back, you got to pick up Tim Patrick. He is just as consistent as you can get. Um, PPR wise, except for week four against Baltimore, he's at had over 12 PPR points per game. And I mean, he's got three really good matchups coming up against Cleveland, Washington, and Dallas. I, I definitely want to pick him up and he could be a flex play weekly flex play. And I have no problem with it. Um, but yeah, definitely a guy that should be rostered more than just 45% of leagues. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's got three touchdowns on the year already. One last week. 
Um, only had 42 yards, but he had six targets last week. And that, that's pretty good for fantasy, especially as like a, a, a flex at the very least as a flex. Um, like you said, he's got some favorable matchups coming up. He's got Cleveland, who is fifth against wide receivers. He's got uh, Washington, who is first against wide receivers. They're giving up the most points to wide receivers, which means Teddy Bridgewater is going to have a field day with that defense. And then he's got Dallas, who is currently 11th against wide receivers. So, I mean, all of those combined, I mean, he's, he's going to be getting some, some pretty decent yards. He's going to be getting some decent targets. He may even get a couple touchdowns in there. If Jerry Judy doesn't play this week, which it really doesn't look like he's going to, but it's also possible he does, he's going to be pretty solid this week. I, I almost guarantee it. Uh, and this just next a guy, heads up for those that are listening. Whenever we say fifth to wide receivers and first, that means – first most fifth most points right. given up so the lower the number so like one is the like one that you want to target the most and so on yeah thank you thank you for clarifying that it is, it is I, I would not be talking about it i would not be saying it like it's a good thing if i'm saying hey oh yeah he's going up against the worst defense against these guys <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Um, this next guy that we're going to talk about is going to be a guy that is also currently on uh, IR. Is he still on IR? Did they take him off of IR yet? Um, I don't no. think he's off yet, but he's soon. So, yeah, we could have yeah. grouped him in earlier, but that would be fine. So, it is going to be Michael Gallup, uh, Cowboys receiver. He does have a lot of mouths to feed on offense, but he's also a really, really good receiver, and he's only rostered in 52% of the leagues right now. Michael Gallup, like I said, solid, solid receiver. In week one, and is the only week that he's played so far this this season, seven targets. Despite the fact that CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, Zeke out of the backfield, Tony Pollard, uh, even Dalton Schultz now, who's a top 10 fantasy tight end for some reason. Despite all that, Michael Gallup is a really, really solid pickup, especially if he's sitting there in your waiver wire. Just like – just excuse me. Just like Jerry Judy, just like Michael Thomas, if he's sitting there just because he's on IR and your waiver wire, pick him up. At the very least, there's always a chance that he could get traded to. Um, I believe this is the last year of his contract. So if there's a team that likes him good enough, they will trade for him. If there's a team that needs him, they're going to trade for him. And if they need him, he's going to be utilized because he's a really good receiver. Um, right now, it looks like they are hopeful that he's going to practice um roughly about uh week eight so obviously a bye this week but the week after this you know would not be a, a, a bad start at all especially if he gets traded before that trade deadline yeah the big thing about Gallup is yeah he got seven targets week one but he also left that game early like that's one Absolutely. thing that I know you didn't say but I'm going to say like he left that great game early with his injury so yeah. Yeah. he could have got even more yeah. like last year alone Last year, so we, we look at last year, he still had Amari Cooper there. He had C.D. Lamb there. But he also had Andy Dalton starting quarterback. He was still top 40 among wide receivers and fantasy points, which is, like, really good for a third option on a team. So, yeah, he's definitely a good pickup, um, especially in dynasty formats. If you're in dynasty, he is definitely a good pickup like you said he's going to be a free agent and somebody else is going to want to pick him up he could be a second option on the next team that he goes to now looking into our next pickup it is going to be ty hilton he is currently rostered in 45 percent of leagues and hopefully that number rises whenever waivers go through but now that he's back i think from what it looks like carson could bring back that same energy that Andrew to T.Y. had. Um, I know the Colts offense, they want to open up the field more. They want to do more shots down the field. And T.Y. is that guy that's always been there to do the deep shots. Um, like we said earlier, he had four receptions for 80 yards, which is good for 20 yards a catch. So, and that wasn't getting a touchdown. So you got to imagine some of these, he's going to get a touchdown on him too. Um, the Colts, they like to spread the ball around a lot, but I think T.Y. and Pittman are going to be the main focal points of this offense. So especially Paris Campbell getting put on IR potentially for the rest of the year, I think T.Y. is 
going to be pretty good for the rest of the season. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, T.Y. Hilton is that deep threat that the Colts have been wanting all season. Uh, Michael Pittman isn't quite really a deep threat. He's more of a big body receiver, puts his hands on the ball and brings that ball in. Paris Campbell, they were trying to turn into that deep threat. Paris Campbell's not really a deep threat either. He's got the speed, he's got the burners, but he's more of a short guy. He's more of a yards after catch guy. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is that guy who gets behind the defense and catches that ball and takes it in the end zone. If, you know, last week was them technically working him in. If that's him getting worked into this offense, imagine what he's going to do as the season progresses. If T.Y. Hilton stays healthy with a quarterback who has a big arm, I mean, I was going to say arm, this 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 could be a really good matchup. This is what Carson Wentz has been wanting. It was a guy to throw the ball to, just air it out. And honestly, T.Y. Hilton could, could probably get some touchdowns coming up here soon. Um, moving on to tight ends here. Our first tight end is a guy – that I talked about last week, and I got a flex on that real quick because I told you guys he was going to be good, told you guys he was going to get those targets. He got the targets, he got the yards, and he got a touchdown just like I said he would. All right, Ricky Steeles jones last week, six targets, played 100% of the snaps at tight end, 100% of them. They didn't care about anybody else. Ricky Seals Jones played 100%. Washington showed they want to use him, and Washington showed they did use him. Four receptions, 58 yards, and a touchdown. That touchdown wasn't in the red zone. I did say they like to target him in the red zone, and I believe they did, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Ricky Seals Jones looked pretty decent last week as a backup tight end, who is now the starter because Logan Thomas is on IR. Ricky, or Ricky Seals Jones, especially this week, uh, is going to be another really good matchup. Uh, Green Bay is roughly middle of the pack against tight ends. So, you know, put Ricky Seals Jones back in that lineup. He's only 40% rostered right now. There's no reason for that. He's the starting tight end in an offense that likes to use tight ends and an offense that only has Terry McLaurin as the only other weapon. Pick him up, bring him off that waiver wire. He's going to get you more uh, yards. He's going to get you more points in general. I promise. Yeah, until Curtis Samuel comes back from his groin injury, like Ricky Seals Jones is going to be used a lot. Um, and even now with Antonio Gibson potentially missing time too, that's just going to help Ricky Seals Jones. Exactly. But yeah, I, I really like him as a pickup. I think he's going to be used quite a bit. He might even be used once Logan Thomas comes back since he's been shown pretty good. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely like him as a pickup. And Hate to say it, but I mean, I think we called it, especially mm -hmm. you, since you talked about mm -hmm. him a lot. You shouldn't hate to say it at all. You got to flex <laughs> it when you got it. You know what gotta, I mean? Got to flex it. Hey, just telling you, it's, it pays to listen to us, I guess. Mm -hmm. The next guy that I want to talk about is a rookie tight end, which normally I do not advise like starting rookie tight ends, but this guy's going to be Pat Fryermuth. Um, I thought once Juju went down, I thought more targets were going to go to like Najee and Deontay Johnson and Claypool. But Fryermuth had seven targets this past week against Seattle. Um, he did very well with it. He is obviously taking over the main tight end spot from Eric Ebron, which to me is no surprise. But um, he's definitely taking it over. I, th I know he's on the bye this coming week but he's definitely a guy that I would want to keep as my bench tight end. And once my main tight ends on a bye, I'd be able to play him for a week to hopefully get like five targets um, with touchdown upside. But yeah, to me, he's a worth a stash as he's, if, if he keeps getting seven targets a week, I think that's pretty good for a tight end. Yeah, it definitely is for sure. Uh, um... I'm not a hundred percent his pace is going down. They are getting that extra spot open for another mouth to feed. And it looks like it is Pat Firemuth. Um, I liked him a lot coming out of college out of Penn state. Like I said, Ohio state fan. So I watched him a lot playing against Ohio state always torched us always against the Ohio state's defense, which is notoriously good. Pat Firemuth showed that he is just better. Um, he is better than Eric Ebron, the former Colt. Eric Ebron is washed at this point. Who cares about him? The future is now. It's Pat Fryermuth's time. He's got a bye this week. 
if he is on your waivers, pick him up. Even if he is on somebody's roster who is only, as of right now, Pat Pat, Pat Fryer is only on 17% of rosters, which is not very big at all. And I guarantee that's probably rosters of leagues who have, you know, 14 plus players in them. So pick up Pat Firemuth. He's going to, he's going to get the job done. If not now, eventually he's going to, he's going to start getting worked in that offense more and more and more. Uh, Another tight end we're going to talk about here is going to be OJ Howard. OJ Howard last week showed that if you give the ball to a talented player, that talented player is going to do something with it. Now, granted, he only had 49 yards, but he also had six receptions and a touchdown. Um, with Gronk out, Lord knows when he's coming back. Um, probably next week if I had to guess, but OJ Howard proved that he can be that tight end one if need be. They don't have to rush Gronk back into this if, they're, if that's what they're trying to do. It is a high-powered offense. I've said that at least 50 times this, this episode so far. But it is, you know, it's a pass-heavy offense, including Leonard Fournette, who likes to run the ball, despite the fact that it's a pass-heavy offense. Um, but O.J. Howard, seven targets last week, 49 yards, six receptions, a touchdown. This, this is a very talented tight end who was not utilized at all for the last four years of his career in Tampa Bay. He's finally starting to get worked in there. He's only on 7% of rosters right now. Would not hurt to pick him up, especially if Gronk doesn't play this week. Yeah, I I always loved OJ Howard. Like since he got drafted there to the Buccaneers, I I know whenever he was a rookie and second year player, I know I drafted him in a bunch of leagues, just hoping that talent would come out, but it never did. But yeah, last Thursday night it showed that talent showed it finally came out, and I'm hoping it can keep up. Maybe he can get traded at the deadline once Gronk gets back or sign with a new team this offseason. But I, I think he could be a quality starting tight end in this league. To be quite honest, I wouldn't mind if the Colts got him next year, but I wouldn't be surprised if that didn't happen as well. I would die to see. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun, but I don't know if that will happen. And speaking of Colts tight ends, I am going to be talking about a Colts tight end and Mo Alley Cox. Just a name to throw out there. Um, he's been getting utilized in this offense more these past three weeks. Uh, he's had three touchdowns in the past three games. I know the two came against Miami, but uh, I think if he keeps getting utilized and targeted more in this offense, it might be worth a shot taking because he is a big boy. And if you throw him the ball, he's – it's kind of hard to take down, but it's hard to knock the ball out of his hands. So I think he would, he's a great red zone target. Hopefully they keep targeting more often. He could have had even more success this past week if he didn't drop the dime that Carson threw to him. But I definitely think he's worth a pickup for right now. I wouldn't recommend starting him yet, but definitely worth a pickup. If he keeps getting this usage, he might be a starter down the line. Yeah, I'd like to see him get a little more usage going before I pick him up. But if you've got a spot on your roster and every other guy that we've talked about has been picked up already and Mo Cox is just sitting there, despite the fact that he has been underutilized the last six weeks, he's also the 19th tight end in fantasy right now. And he's only on 9% of rosters. That's a top 20 tight end on 9% of rosters. That doesn't really make sense in my head. Um, Jack Doyle did out snap him by go ahead. I, I know sleeper doesn't do this metric, but I wonder if like the last three weeks, what his ranking would be like having oh, the yeah. three tight ends. He's probably pretty up there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised too, because he's got, I mean, against Miami had almost 20 points. Baltimore had eight Houston had nine. Now granted everybody, every tight end outside of like the top five or six tight ends this year, isn't really worth anything, but at this point, it's just extra points for you. Take those extra points when you can get them. Mo Alley Cox is getting those tight ends. It really seems like he's starting to get a groove going with Carson Wentz too, which I really love to see. Carson Wentz loves throwing him the ball in the red zone. He loves throwing the ball in the end zone. Um, If he keeps throwing dimes like that, Mo already told him straight up, if you throw it up to me, I'm going to come down with it. Last week that didn't happen. Still came away with a touchdown eventually. 
I'd love to see more of that coming from them. And I think we, we actually might. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Um, I know after he dropped that one, he came back and told Carson, like, or Carson told him, hey, I still got you. And then he threw that yeah. other touchdown to him. So, yeah, uh, hoping to see more of that, especially because he's been underutilized. But moving on to our next topic, we're going to do our buy low, sell high top uh, players. So starting off with buy low, I am going to start off with Austin Eckler. Now, with Austin Eckler, the Chargers as a whole just was not good this past week against the Ravens. They scored, I believe, six points. Um, So none of their fantasy relevant players were very good. So he had his worst performance of the year, and he's on a bye this week. So some managers might get a little frustrated, just want to get rid of him, get somebody that can get your points this week. Maybe they want Leonard Fournette. Um, If you could get Leonard Fournette, if you could give away Leonard Fournette and get Austin Eckler straight up, I would do that in a heartbeat just because Eckler has been a beast so far this year, except for this past game. Um, But yeah, he's got a very favorable matchup. Uh, to end the year, and uh, he's been averaging over five targets a game. And like I said earlier, one target equals two and a half carries for running backs. So I would definitely try to get him anywhere you could while he's probably at his lowest point and probably the lowest it'll ever get this season. Yeah, for sure. Especially this is something that's probably going to be talked about at least a couple more times from here. Um, This by week, a lot of players have a lot of good fantasy players on a buy, especially if they did poorly the last week. They're looking to get rid of them. They're looking to to they're trying to sell high. But in reality, it's not selling high because these players that are currently on buys right now are still going to perform well. Austin Eckler is still going to do well. He's in a very, very high powered offense. There's that phrase again. Um, He's going to be utilized. Justin Herbert likes giving him the ball. And I, I really think that it's going to be a, a pretty good um, outlook for him from here out. My first buy low is um, right now he is currently ranked the 26th quarterback in fantasy – or, sorry, 21st quarterback in fantasy. He's been starting to come into his own. It's going to be Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Right now he's currently on a buy. So this is somebody you, just like Austin Eckler, you want to look to pick up because people are looking to get other players who are not on buys right now. Trevor Lawrence is only rostered in 62% of rosters, which is, you know, it's pretty, uh, it's above half at least. So if he's in, if he's in the waivers right now, go ahead and pick him up. He's got a pretty decent um, schedule from here out. He's got five, at least five games against poor defenses coming up here. He's getting hot. He's got his first win under his belt, finally. Uh, in the last three weeks, he's got 17 points, 22 points, 14 points. So, I mean, you know, it, it's pretty up there. It's at least 15 points a week, which is always, you know, solid. It's roughly where you want to be looking. 15, 20 points is where you want to be every week. Um, and like I said, he's got some favorable matchups coming up. By him and right now, why he is, uh, you know, pretty much on a buy. So he is not going to get any lower than this because he's going to start getting hotter and hotter and he's going to start looking like that first round pick that that perfect quarterback that everybody thought he was going to be yeah and another big thing with Lawrence is that he's got good weapons around him I mean Marvin Jones he's not a big name but I mean he's still a really good wide receiver he's got LaVisca Chenault there who's really good I wish they would give him more targets um I know they've been using a variety of other players, including Dan Arnold, who they traded for. But, yeah, I mean, he's looked good. I I don't mind this pickup at all. Uh, he's got pretty good matchups t- through the end of the season. I know he's got a couple of rough ones with Buffalo and the Rams, but that's about it, really, as far as teams that are, like, going to be rough on him. Right. Now, looking at my next – by low candidate, which I see that we're just doing all the different positions this week. I got <laughs> Dallas Goddard. And like we said before, um, where we were talking about the Earth trade, Dallas Goddard was a 
talented tight end, and now he's going to get a lot more targets in this Eagles offense. They they want to see that he's the guy, so they're probably going to use him more in this offense now to try to see, hey, can you do this? Can you take over this tight end one role? Um, Goddard, originally this offseason, he was being drafted in the middle rounds on TJ Hawkinson because people thought he was this was going to be his breakout year. Um, that was also due to the fact that at that time in the offseason, Ertz was requesting a trade then, and many people thought that he was going to get traded or even cut so that way the Eagles could take off some of that cap. But he wasn't. They were splitting time, but now it's just Goddard in this in this tight end room. And Jalen Hurts, he likes to target tight end. So I, to me, I think this is the lowest that he's going to get this season now that the hype is starting to build up with him. And this next few weeks, he's got a very favorable matchup for tight ends. So to me, he is my tight end by low for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, I know that the Eagles like uh, Tyree Jackson, who the former quarterback at Buffalo, they like him at tight end for some strange reason. Um, I personally liked him as a quarterback. I didn't think he was NFL ready, but I liked him as a, at least a backup. Um, they seem to like him at quarterback, but Dallas Goddard, especially with Zach Ertz gone, it's not going to be really splitting carries with anybody. Even if they like Tyree Jackson, they're not going to give him a bulk of the snaps. Never. They never will. He's going to show that he can't play tight end and that Dallas Goddard is going to be the only weapon in that offense. Um, obviously didn't play last week, but Dallas Goddard as a whole is getting, he is in the top 10 right now in uh, targets in the red zone. So he's going to be getting those touchdowns. Um, he's got two touchdowns as a target in the red zone already. Um, and that that's without playing last week. So he technically probably could be higher as an average but, uh, you know, anybody who's top 10 as a target in the red zone is going to be looking to score a lot. And if he is the only option outside of Devontae Smith, you know, he's going to be looking to score a lot. Um, our next person here, or my next, is going to be Sterling Shepard. I believe I talked about him last week a little bit. I said he was going to, to, to have a really good game, and he did. He didn't have, you know, the greatest of games, but uh, really good from a fantasy standpoint. He had a really good game. 14 targets for Sterling Shepard. 14. I told you guys to pick him up last week. I went ahead and myself actually picked him up. I didn't start him because I had no room for him. Granted, Mike Williams didn't do anything this week. I probably could have put him over Mike Williams because I was actually debating that. But, you know, if Mike Williams is the second receiver in fantasy, I'm not going to just bench him just because I think Sterling Shepard's going to do well. Um, he did do well. He did outscore Mike Williams. He had 17 points, 14 targets, 76 yards. From here out, Sterling Shepard's got really, really good matchups coming up. Every single game aside from two of the games is against a defense that ranks in the bottom half of the league against wide receivers. He's got some seriously favorable matchups. Kenny Galladay, still out. Uh, Kadarius Tony is probably going to be out at least next week. Um, might not be put on IR, but if he does, it's going to be the Sterling Shepard show for sure. Um, even if Kelly Galladay comes back, Sterling Shepard in the beginning of the season with Kenny Galladay was still out targeting and out snapping uh, uh, Kenny Galladay. So, I mean, Daniel Jones liked him to begin with. He's going to like him now. There's no reason he shouldn't be on your team right now. Yeah, no, I, I love Sterling Shepard as a buy low because, like, the first two games of the season, he was, like, a top-10 wide receiver in fantasy. And, like you said, like, you look at his targets so far this season, week one he had nine, week two he had ten, and now this past week he had 14, which I know it's not always what you want to hear. You want to hear the production. You don't want to hear the could-be production. Right. But whenever you get – Average whenever you're averaging double digits of targets, that means good things going forward. That means your quarterback trusts you. That means that you're getting a high target share, which is what you're looking for. And you want that moving forward. It's more consistent moving forward if you're looking at target shares than just saying, Oh, this guy got three touchdowns in three weeks. He must be pretty good. No, don't look at touchdowns because touchdowns are very 
fluid they could happen one week and not the next week just look at the targets see who's getting targeted a lot and Sterling Shepard is that guy especially with a lot of their offense being hurt he's definitely going to be targeted a lot now as for the sell high my first sell high I had had a kind of rough time looking for some sell high candidates Um, this first one it could bite me in the butt but i think this is probably the highest value you're going to get for him but it's going to be Noah Fant um Fant he has everything to be a really good fancy tight end he is very athletic he's mainly used as a receiving tight end he's not really used to block very much um he gets a lot of targets but the thing is is that he just doesn't come in with a lot of them he's been very inconsistent so far this season I know I actually got him on one of my teams and it's just kind of like an off and on with him. Like he gets the targets, but it's just like, he doesn't do a whole lot with them. And now this past week that he had 11 targets for nine receptions and 97 yards and a touchdown. I think this is probably the highest value you're going to get, especially with Jerry Judy coming back soon. Uh, He's going to take away some of those targets I'd try to sell them for whatever you can. If you can get like a Dallas Goddard plus a bench player, even like a Zach Moss maybe or Damian Harris, I'd do that. Um, Just try to see what you can get for them. And if you can sell high, I would. Yeah, I I, I have no fan actually in one of my leagues. And I think I am going to take that advice. I am going to try to move him for – something whether it's somebody like sterling shepherd somebody like trevor lawrence now uh, if you could get dallas goddard and sterling shepherd for fan, that that would be a wonderful trade and it's it's possible too people are going to look at sterling shepherd and they're going to look at that he's currently 42nd wide receiver in ppr but you know if you average those out he's not 42nd um you know noah fant is a good tight end but with jerry judy coming back tim patrick uh, sort of having a breakout season right now. Cortland Sutton's already, you know, Cortland Sutton, he's pretty solid. Um, Teddy Bridgewater can't spread the ball to everybody. No offense, targets are going to go down. His uh, yards are going to go down. He's going to start getting less touchdowns. There's really no point in having him on your team when you can have a better wide receiver who's going to have a better season coming up here. Um, my first sell high is actually another tight end. It is going to be Zach Ertz. I know a lot of you are right now looking at Zach Ertz and drooling at the mouth because he's in a big offense. He's going to start, you know, getting all these targets. Um, Kyler Murray likes throwing the ball. Kyler Murray likes running the ball too, though. Um, In addition to being a mobile quarterback, the Cardinals do not use their tight ends at all. Max Williams was barely used and when he was I mean it wasn't really much of anything they've got too many mouths to feed in that offense right now um DeAndre Hopkins we talked about this earlier DeAndre Hopkins Rondale Moore Christian Kirk who's starting to look good AJ Green who's starting to look good Rondale Moore is already looking good um and then of course it's DeAndre Hopkins we know him um as as a whole this this offense is too high powered it seems like there's that phrase again um I'm going to start trademarking that here in a second. Um, But it is really – there's no way he's going to be utilized. The Cardinals – and I'm not saying this is going to happen with Zach Ertz, but the Cardinals haven't had a 100-yard receiver since, like, 1989 or something crazy. Like, when every other uh, team had ended with 100 yards since, like, 2013 or something like that. The Cardinals haven't had one since 1989. I'm pretty sure it's 1989. That's insane. They don't care about tight ends. You pick him up thinking he's tight end one now. He's going to do great. Kyler Murray is going to throw in the ball. I highly, highly doubt it. Sell him right now while his value is at the absolute peak before he doesn't do anything for you this season. Go pick up somebody else. Pick better tight end, better wide receiver if you need that. Pick up a better quarterback, anything. Get anything you can get for him right now because he's not going to be what you think he's going to be. Yeah, after his trade to the Cardinals, the hype's going to get to him, I think. Um, like we said earlier, A.J. Green, he's getting six targets a game. Um, you got DeAndre Hawkins, he's going to want around 10 targets a game. 
Christian Kirk, he deserves a few targets. Rondell Moore deserves a few targets. Even Chase Edmonds out of the backfield, he likes to get receptions. So Ertz, yeah, he could fit in, but how many targets is he going to get per week? I think it's going to be very up and down for him this season. To me, he's definitely a guy that you could sell and you could even pick up like a Ricky Seals Jones off the waiver wire and start him instead. If if you can you sell, yeah, if you can sell urge for a bench player, I'd do it. Just uh, get more depth at wide receiver, running back, and just pick up Ricky Seals Jones or someone else. As for my next sell high, it's going to be Kenyon Drake. If if he's still rostered on many leagues, which it seems like he is, um, Drake has been very awful to start the season, which they paid him a pretty big contract to come there to Vegas, almost at Oakland. But he has just been not good. Um, even when Josh Jacobs was inactive those few games, for some reason, they liked Peyton Barber more, and they're using Peyton Barber as a workhorse. Um, I know this past week against Denver, he had over 20 PPR points, but that came on six touches. And for me, I don't like my running backs to have six touches. So if you can get any sort of value for him, I'd do it just to get rid of him because if it wasn't for the name, I'd probably drop him. So, yeah, I if you can get any sort of value, do it. Yeah, for sure. Um, Kenyon Drake was signed to be that – that not necessarily bell cow, but he, he was signed to be that backup to Josh Jacobs, and he was supposed to be that guy. He is not that say, guy. To me, it I thought it was going to be like a Kareem Hunt jo- – or, yeah, Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb type thing with Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. I think that's but, what it was supposed to be. Yeah. And, I mean – you know, maybe John Gruden just didn't like him. Maybe the new head coach is you know, going to utilize him a little more. Um, well, it was but, weird because to start the season, first three games, he had five targets, five targets, and six targets. But now he's seeing zero targets, one target, two targets in his last three. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Because, I mean, he was, he was solid for Arizona last year. Then the Raiders signed him. Everybody's expecting they got so hard. They uh, started hyping him up on Twitter and stuff. It was supposed to be that Drake and Josh combo, being that. And I, I really don't think it's going to ever be that. Um, it really seems like they're not even using Josh Jacobs that often either. So I don't think any running back's going to do much in Oakland or not Oakland. I, I did it. You didn't do, it, but I did. <laughs> there you go. Um, in Vegas. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be much. Uh, the theme here of matching our positions for our sell highs. You did a tight end. I did a tight end. You did a running back. I've got a running back and people are probably going to hate this. I said, I was going to talk about it. My sell high is going to be Leonard Fournette. I had him in a couple of weeks. I already sold him, um, you know, coming up, especially the last few weeks, he's been really, really, really good, really good, better than a lot of people were expecting him to be, but coming up, for the rest of this season, he's got some pretty, pretty bad matchups. At least seven of his coming upcoming games right now are against defenses that are in the top half of the league against running backs. Top half of the league. And six of those upcoming games are against top 10 teams that are, you know, against running backs. That's not good. That's not good for him. Um, they've got a solid offensive line that Tampa Bay does, but it's not really going to do much. Um especially because they've got some better matchups for wide receivers coming up as well. Uh, you know, a lot of these teams that aren't good against running backs or are, are good against running backs, sorry, aren't good against wide receivers. So if Tom Brady can throw the ball to Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard, Antonio Brown, uh, Gronk, he's going to, and he's not going to give it to Leonard Fournette, especially if these guys are going to get open. Tom Brady likes throwing the ball a lot more. Than he likes handing it off. He might get some touches out of the backfield, but I don't really think he's going to do too much. Um, on top of that, a lot of better teams coming up too than the top half of their schedule. Uh, New Orleans isn't bad. He's got Washington. They've got a pretty solid offense. Uh, Indy, Atlanta is not really that good, but they've got a, an all right offense if Cordero Patterson gets going. Buffalo, New Orleans again, Carolina twice. 
So, I mean, these are, these are teams that can have a shootout with the, with the Buccaneers and in a shootout, you're not running the ball. Um, so I don't really see him getting utilized too, too much. He might get utilized a little bit this week. He actually might still look good this week. And you may say, Austin, you are wrong. But for the rest of the season, I don't think he's going to look like he's been looking. Well, like I said last week, I'll say it again. If you sell a player at their highest value and you get high value in return, what's it matter if he keeps doing well? If you get good players in return, it doesn't matter what he does because you got good players in return. Um, the only the only bad thing is if you trade Leonard Fournette away and get a player or two in return and they don't do good. So that's the only way you really lose. But, yeah, no, I totally agree. I think his value is at his highest. Um, the usage with him, we could see that go down definitely with some of these games coming up. Uh, but, yeah, I – I personally don't know if I would sell him, but I do understand the reasoning for wanting to sell him. I just think that the name Leonard Fournette doesn't get people too excited just yet. But I, after this performance this past week with two touchdowns, I think this might be the max val- uh, max value you can get. I mean, for. the name itself might not be good, but he is about to be a top ten running back in fantasy right now. He is at eleven. He is on the very edge. If, you know, especially with this week with all the running backs that aren't getting any playing time after this week, he's going to be a top 10 run in fantasy. So, I mean, you going against Chicago. Right, exactly. Use that as trade value. He's going to look good to a lot of people. Yeah. Now, moving on, we're going to do our starts of the week this week for week seven, the Bipocalypse week. So, had to dig a little bit deeper this week on some players, but we're trying to help you guys get it a, a, your best starting lineups that you can some guys that you might be on the fringe about starting or not if these are any of your guys i feel like you should feel a little bit more comfortable about them just because of the matchups and that they could produce in their situations this week for me starting off at quarterback i have sam darnold now sam darnold actually started out really hot for fantasy, which a lot of that was thanks to his rushing touchdowns, which he hasn't had this pat these past few weeks. But this week, I, he's got a great matchup against the Giants, who gives up the six most points to opposing quarterbacks. So, to me, I think he's definitely worth the start this week. Wherever you got DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. Um, Chuba Hubbard has been a very good replacement for McCaffrey, which I will get to him in a second. But yeah, I think he's got a great matchup and he's going to exploit it. Yeah, I like Sandarner a lot. Um, I, I did pick him up in a few of my leagues with people who have dropped him after a poor performance a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think this week he's got a pretty good matchup and I really think he can go off this week. Um, and I, I really don't see it any other way, especially with that rushing game upside. I think he can go off, especially, um, you know, that rushing game upside, like I said. Uh, Chuba Hubbard's there, obviously, but, you know, his receiving threats, uh, this matchup that's upcoming here, I think he's got a pretty solid uh, week ahead of him here. My quarterback start of the week is going to be Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Two Gloves, Teddy B, whatever you want to call him make sure you start him. Uh, Cleveland this week is giving up the fourth most points to quarterbacks. Um, when I did say that correctly this time, they're giving up the fourth most points to quarterbacks. Teddy Bridgewater has already looked like a solid quarterback as it is. Um, you put that on top of with all of Cleveland's injuries on defense, all of their injuries on offense. Teddy Bridgewater's got a pretty, pretty good matchup coming up here. Um, especially if Jerry Judy comes back. If Jerry Judy comes back, which they did say it's less than a 50% chance, but if he comes back, he's got tons of weapons at his disposal with nobody on Cleveland's defense to stop him aside from Miles Garrett, who, you know, may eat him alive, but that's my scariest buddy. Um, so, I mean, I, Teddy Bridgewater is a pretty for for really anybody this week. Yeah, even without Jerry Judy, you still got Sutton there. You got Tim Patrick there. You got Fant there. Um, Javante Williams, he can even catch some passes out of the backfield. Yeah, I think he's a 
very good start this week, especially with the banged up Cleveland Browns team who has underperformed this year. I, I think he's definitely worth a start. I even think that they could even win this game, but we'll see about that. Now, uh, real quick before, before we move on, I do want to point out that another start this week is it's a pretty obvious one, but I really think he's going to go off. And I'm not just saying next I have him in a lot of league. It's going to be Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford's got that revenge game coming up against Detroit. He spent his whole career there. This is his first year in LA. He's got Detroit coming up. Detroit already not that great of a defense. He's going to torch them and he's going to show them what they're missing. And I almost guarantee that. Now, notice how I'm not saying the same, the same thing about Jared Goff. It's because Jared Goff's not Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford's going to look good against this team. I promise you. If for some reason you've got two good quarterbacks and you're debating which one to start, please put Matt Stafford in there. He can torch the Lions. I almost guarantee it. Yeah, unless you got like Patrick Mahomes, like I feel like Stafford is a really good start for you. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Stafford, like I know you said Jared Goff, he's not the same type of quarterback, but even with him being a very much lesser quarterback, he also has the lesser weapons. He doesn't have a Robert Woods, he doesn't have a Cooper Cup. Like Higby and Hawkinson, I would probably take Hawkinson over Higby, but that's about it for receiving weapons in Detroit. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a smash start. Now, moving on to running backs, I have Chuba Hubbard as my start of the week at running back. And Chuba has filled in very well for McCaffrey. He's definitely not Christian McCaffrey. Like, Christian McCaffrey is just in his own tier whenever he's playing. But he, Chuba, over this whole season, including the first few games where Christian McCaffrey was active. He's still the 36th running back this season. Um, he's getting his workload. He got 16 carries last week. The week before, he had 24 and six targets. So he's getting a good workload. And this week, again, he's facing the Giants. And the Giants are giving up the fifth most points to running backs. So I think this whole Panthers offense is just going to eat this week. Yeah, I, I get. I completely agree. Um, like you said already, you the Giants are are not good against running backs. Um, They're so not really it, good it against anything. Be, that's true. Yeah, the Giants have a pretty terrible defense. Um, but it's going to be a really good matchup for him um, from a fantasy standpoint, especially with Christian McCaffrey gone for the next few weeks. Make sure his Chuba Hubbard's in your lineup. Um, I liked him a lot coming out of college everybody should know about him by now, especially with how often Christian McCaffrey has not played. Um, this, this is a guy who once led all of college football in rushing yards. So he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's all about. Um, it, it's, it's a pretty good matchup for him. I actually went and traded for him myself. Mike, if you're watching this, what's up, man? Uh, thanks for Naeem Hines or thanks for taking Naeem Hines off my hands. I'll take good care of Chuba Hubbard. Uh, my running back start of the week is going to be, uh, another running back who, you know, should be a pretty obvious start. Um, but if he's on your bench for whatever reason, make sure you're starting Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson, just like Matt Stafford, he's got a really good matchup coming up against Detroit, who isn't good against really anything at all. Detroit actually is giving up the third most points to running backs. Uh, Daryl Henderson, the last couple of weeks, has been doing very, very well in fantasy. Uh, he's a guy that I went and traded for in a couple of my leagues, actually. He was your buy hot. low last week. He was, exactly, yeah. And now look at him. Look at us. Look at us go. I mean, what can we say? This is why we're here. This is why we're here to tell you. Um, but he is. he's starting to get hot now. He's starting to look like uh, that RB1. And he, at some point very soon, is probably going to be a top 10 running back in fantasy. Uh, especially, you know, with the with Matt Stafford going up against that Detroit Lions defense. I'm sure he's going to feature Henderson out of the backfield quite a bit. I'm sure he's going to get him involved in any way he can because Matt Stafford is going to want to put up as many points as he can against the Lions. I almost guarantee it. I'm sure he loves that organization. I loves what he, you know, everything that he's given food to them, but he also wants to show them what they're missing. He wants to show them that he could have made the playoffs all these years. He could have even maybe taken them to a Super Bowl like he made with the Rams. So Daryl Henderson's going to get a lot because they're going to want to score a lot of points. Yeah, if only Alliance would have actually paid Calvin Johnson 
after they made him retire, maybe they would have better luck than what they do. But yeah, no, I totally agree. Daryl Henderson to me, like you can start him week in and week out from now on, unless he gets injured, which you can't predict that, but he is definitely a guy that you called it should have bought low on. He is definitely a smash start for this mm-hmm. week. Now, moving on to tight or not tight end, moving on to wide receiver, I have Antonio Brown. Now, Antonio Brown, he's actually been very good this season so far. He's the 15th wide receiver in fantasy, and that was with missing a game due to COVID. So he's been very good. And even though he has a little bit of a tougher matchup this week, not really because they still give up the 13th most points to wide receivers. So it's still a pretty good matchup for him. Um, But Antonio Brown, like crazy enough, he's been the most targeted per game wide receiver out of any Buccaneers receiver. Um, I believe it's also the most targeted per game since he joined the team last year. I don't have the stats on it, so I can't say for sure, but I know this year, um, Mike Evans, he's had 8.1 targets per game. Chris Godwin's had 7.6. And Antonio Brown's had 8.4. So just a slight bump up from Mike than Mike Evans. But like this past week, past three weeks alone, Antonio Brown's had 11 targets, eight targets in this past week, 13 targets, which is just crazy ridiculous numbers. Um He's third on the team in targets, second in yards, and tied for first in touchdowns, all missing that game that I mentioned before. So I think Tom Brady likes him. I think he's one of his favorite targets. So I think you should be starting him. Yeah, they definitely – they tried this uh, one time with Tom Brady when Tom Brady was in New England. Antonio Brown wanted to play with him in New England. They did for a little bit. They didn't end up working out in the long run. Antonio Brown is back, and I, I'm telling you, at 33 years old, he looks like prime Antonio Brown. Um, he's not missing a step at all. He has all those targets. Tom Brady's liking to get in the groove with him finally. Uh, he's getting the yards. I mean, he had 124 yards against Miami two weeks ago, 93 yards against uh, Philadelphia last week, and three touchdowns in the last two weeks. Tom Brady really likes what he's got in Antonio Brown, despite having Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, who are also two other top 10 receivers. And I don't mean to fantasy. I just mean top 10 receivers in general. Antonio Brown seems like he's looking like old Antonio Brown, which makes that another top 10 receiver that he's got in that offense. It's a high powered offense. He's got a solid matchup against uh, Chicago. Chicago has been pretty middle of the pack against most positions. Uh, If I'm not mistaken, they are 16th, giving up the 16th most points to tight ends. So, I mean, or not tight ends, sorry, against wide receivers. I mean, you know, it, one I saw was got 13th, cover. so. I mean, yeah, it's pretty much middle it's of the pack. Yeah. yeah. Um, but at the same time, you got to also think about, you can't just look at statistics because the Bears also have to cover Chris Godwin. They also have to cover Mike Evans. They also have to cover O.J. Howard. If Gronk is back, they also have to cover Gronk. I don't think he's going to be back this week, but they also have to cover Gronk. I mean, all these mouths to feed. Antonio Brown's going to get open at some point. He's going to get behind that defense and he's going to, to catch a, a big ball for sure for a touchdown. Not for sure, but you know, it, it's pretty likely, especially with the way he's been playing. Um, my wide receiver start of the week can also be technically paired as a running back start of the week. Depends where you've got him is going to be Cordero Patterson. Now you may be thinking, you know, this guy is top three in both running back and wide receiver rankings in fantasy right now. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of people who don't really realize what they've got with Cordero Patterson. They think maybe he's just this one off, you know, this is it. This is all I've got for him. And, you know, that very well may be it after this week, he may end up being a sell high for me. You never know. But this week is a week that you're going to want to start him because Miami is who he is facing. They are not good against anything that Cordero Patterson plays. He is going to Return kicks, it wouldn't surprise me if he houses one. Miami is currently ranked first. They are giving up the most points to running backs, which Cordero Patterson getting rush the backfield. And they're giving up the third most points to wide receivers. Cordero Patterson does both things. He is going to pretty much torch this Miami uh, defense. 
this Falcons offense has been waiting to come back. I believe they're coming off of a bye. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they're coming off of a bye. Yeah. So they're well rested. Cordero Patterson had some time to, to, to rest himself, especially after carrying this offense for the last five weeks. Um, it is going to be a good start for him. And it wouldn't surprise me if he continues on this hot streak we've been on. Yeah. I should have mentioned earlier, but Calvin Ridley is another guy that I would buy low on. He is a very good receiver and he's been very disappointing to start the season. And now with him coming back, I would try to buy low on him if he can, but yeah, as for Patterson, yeah, he's definitely a smash start this week. Um, Mike Davis is the only really other competition at running back, and Mike Davis just really isn't that good. Um, wide receiver, he's one of the top targets there alongside Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts. So I think he's just getting so much usage that you have to play him. Um, and with it being a very good matchup to both running back and wide receiver, yeah, I, you got to start him. He could be the top running back or top wide receiver this week, or both. Exactly. <laughs> now, for tight end, I am going to talk about this man once again because I just really like him, but it's going to be Dallas Goddard. Um, now, with Dallas Goddard being the only guy in the room, which I should say he's still on the COVID list, but I am assuming that he's going to be back by this Sunday. So... Hopefully he's back. If not, you'll have to find another tight end. But if Goddard is playing, I am playing him in my lineups. He's the only tight end in the room in Philadelphia. And like I said before, Hertz likes to target his tight ends. Um, so I would say that he's going to get probably around six, seven targets this game, uh, which he is playing Las Vegas. Las Vegas – They've actually been surprisingly good against wide receivers, but they're pretty bad against tight ends. They've given up the six most points to tight ends so far this season. So I think that they're going to target him a lot. Um, on on average, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. On average, yeah. I've actually got the giving up the first most points to tight end on average. Oh, really? I didn't see that. I saw six. I'm looking at something else then, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but – yeah, to me, with Goddard, I, to me personally, I think he's more talented than Ertz is at this point in his career. I think that he could just break out the rest of the season, but especially this week against a weak defense of tight ends, I'd, I'd start Dallas Goddard. Yeah, Dallas Goddard would not be a bad start at all. I think if he plays this week, uh, Philly's going to want to show that they did not make a mistake by trading away Zach Ertz. So I think they're going to try to utilize him as much as they can. Um, like we mentioned, the Raiders are not good against tight ends, regardless if it's first or if it's sixth. It's still not good. They're not good against tight ends. Um, so he's going to get lots of targets. He's going to get lots of targets in the red zone, which he is very, very good in. Um, let me double check that stat actually real quick. I believe he, yeah, he is one, two, three. He's tied for fourth in targets in the red zone. Tied for fourth, and he also missed last week. So, I mean, you know, they really like to utilize him in the red zone. He's going to get some scoring opportunities. Uh, uh, Dallas Goddard would not be a bad matchup this week at all. Well, I just like tight ends. The, these past few weeks with Ertz, Ertz there at Philadelphia, he had seven targets, eight targets, six targets, six targets. And some of those games was with Dallas Goddard there. Right. Now with Ertz out, Goddard's going to get a lot of that work. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, every everything that Zach Ertz was getting while Dallas Goddard was playing, Dallas Goddard's now getting. Because, like we said earlier, talking about Goddard, like we talked about in three different segments now, he's getting all the targets. This Every single target's going to him and maybe a few to Devontae Smith, but everything else is going to Dallas Goddard. Uh, my tight end this week is going to be uh, Hunter Henry. The Patriots tight end, he has been, for the first part of the season, has been splitting sort of, it seemed like, with Jonu Smith. It really seems like Bill Belichick and Mac Jones like what they have in Hunter Henry a little more than what they have in Jonu Smith now. Um, Hunter Henry last week only had two uh, receptions, two targets, but it really, you know, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, granted, he did out-snap uh, Hunter Henry. Jonu Smith out-snapped Hunter Henry last week. Um but every other week it has been the Hunter Henry show. Hunter Henry before that 
six targets, five targets, eight targets, and a touchdown in the last three games. So, you know, he has at least 10 points in the last three games. So it's something to definitely look out for because the Jets, who he is facing this week, are the 10th or giving up the 10th most points to tight ends. That is definitely a matchup you want to watch out for. Granted, John o. Smith can come in at any time and steal those targets away from Hunter Henry. But if you've got him on your bench and not John o. Smith, start Hunter Henry because he's got a really, really good matchup coming up here. Yeah, Henry has definitely taken over that receiving tight end work from Johnny Smith. Um, I know Johnny came into New England first. He got the big contract. But Hunter Henry is just that athletic guy that you want to be your receiving tight end. And to me, he, it seems like Mac Jones likes to throw to him. I know this past week he only had two targets. But if you look at his previous games, he's had three targets, four targets, six targets, five targets, eight targets. So, I'm not too worried about this one game being a little bit lower. And even though he had two targets, he still got a touchdown for you. So Dallas is also against tight ends too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I definitely think he'd be a good start. I, he could potentially be a tight end one the rest of the way too, with the way that Mac Jones has been targeting him. If that keeps up, we'll see. But yeah, I definitely think he is a good play for this week at least, especially with all the teams on by. Well, on top of that, it is – Mac Jones seems to really like him in the red zone. Um, as of right now, Hunter Henry stands as the – he has, he has right now the second most uh, red zone yards and the second most red zone touchdowns in the entire NFL. So, I mean, he gets utilized and gets his scoring opportunity for sure. Now, red zone yards, that's actually a big stat to hear about because red zone touchdowns, yeah, anybody can – catch a touchdown in the red zone real quick but the red zone yards like you're getting a lot of work in the red zone to be racking up those yards then yeah i mean this to be exact this season right now hunter henry has 44 red zone yards which is second like i said and only behind tyler higby who has 48 so i mean he's pretty much up there right now yeah neck and neck yeah all right so that concludes what we have for you today austin is there anything else that you want to tell everybody before we leave I mean, just like I said last week, clearly we proved ourselves last week, and I oh, I can for sure guarantee we're going to prove ourselves this week. We're going to be someone to watch out for, both of us. We know what we're talking about. I dominated my fantasy matchup last week because of my own advice, also because of Luke's advice as well. So both of us, we know what we're talking about. We know what we're doing. We're going to help you win your leagues. We're here for you. This is completely free. We're here for you. We're here to help you. Yeah, we're here to – not just help us win fantasy championships. We're here to try to help you guys win fantasy championships. Now, obviously we're not going to get everything right because we're not perfect. We don't see the future in the NFL, um, but we are going to do what we can to try to help you to our knowledge, to what we see in these games, to the research that we've done. We're just here to try to help you guys to be the best fantasy managers that you are. Obviously, if you have a take that you disagree with us, then don't trade away a player that I'm saying to trade away. You got to also have your own decisions because I'm an idiot. Sometimes I'm going to say things just because maybe I don't like the player or like for Noah fan, like I'm just saying this because I don't think he's been that great of a tight end. So if you have your own takes, go ahead and follow him. I'm not going to get upset at you for doing that. And but, another thing is that we spend hours looking at numbers and statistics and everything like that so you don't have to but at the other end of the table you know statistics sometimes lie we're here to to read off these numbers to you so you don't have to go spend hours researching them yourself you get to sit here and watch an hour hour and a half long video about what we have to say but you know sometimes stats lie sometimes we are going to say something that we read as a number that may not, you know, contribute to the rest of the season. There's nothing, you know, there's no guarantees in these things. Um, Last week was a really good week for both of us uh, in terms of what we had said this week may not be the same. I think that it will be. I think we're going to, you know, do pretty well this week. Um, But, you know, it's never a guarantee with fantasy. I got to say, I know last week, another thing I wanted to mention is that um, I had a question come up between like Devonte Booker and Khalil Herbert. These guys were both war courses for their teams just because of the injuries at the running back position. And I told someone to start 
Booker over Herbert just because I figured Booker would get a lot of work and he's I thought he was going to get a touchdown out of the game, which he didn't. But I mean, he still ended up with 12 carries for 41 yards and four receptions for 28 yards. So it's not like it was a bad outing by him, but it's just Herbert got the touchdown and Booker didn't. That's how things go sometimes. That is, yeah. I mean, that, me personally, I actually had the option in one of my leagues to pick up either Booker or Herbert. I actually opted for Herbert in that league, started him because I had nobody else it worked out in the long run. So, I mean, it's pretty hit or miss with these things, but at the same time, it seems like we are more hit than we are miss. And we're doing the research for you so you don't have to do it. Yeah. Like we said, we're here to help you, and we hope that we can help you. And for us to help you more, go ahead and follow us on Twitter, at The Fantasy Table. My personal is at Big Fur Camp, and Austin's is at The Austin Isaac. Go follow us on there. Hit us up with questions. You can add us. You can DM us. Whatever you want to get your questions across, we will be there to answer them for you. Now, if that is it for you, Austin, I think it is time to end the show. I believe that is it, sir. All right. Well, thanks you got, thank you to you guys for coming out and watching our show. We really appreciate it. And until next week, it's been us, the fancy table. So we'll see you.